Hey, what's up everybody? Cody from Detroit Speed here. We have three projects that we've made a lot of progress on in just the past few months. Roger's 1968 Mustang, Kevin's 1969 GTO, and Simon's 1970 Chevelle. Today, I'm gonna to talk with the guys in the shop, see what progress they've made on these builds. All right, first up, Roger's 1968 Mustang. So Curtis, what you got going on with the Mustang? Been just finishing up some underhood fabrication, including this uh, intake tube. Got the washer bottle made. Got the new front drive system on it. Waiting on a couple more parts to button up in here, and then it's gonna be moving on to the rest of the body. Tell us about this. So this is Holly's new low pro intake for the Cobra, or the Cobra, sorry, replace the Cobra jet intake manifold for the new Coyote motors. It actually allowed us to use the stock hood where the factory Cobra jet was going to be about an inch too high and we'd really have to mess with the hood. Did not want to do that and ruin the nice lines. So how much clearance do you actually have from the bottom of the hood? I believe we're sitting right around an inch at the lowest point. Okay. So plenty of room. So if you're doing a coyote swap and you need the extra clearance, this is a great product to help with that. And I'll put a link in the description below so you can check that out. All right, we're working on replacing the door skin on this driver's side. There were some previous sins done to the car. Really got hit here pretty hard. It just decided it would be much easier to replace the old door skin. So we got that going on. Got a few boo-boos to fix up, but should be moving to gap work pretty soon. All right, Bruce. Tell us about what you've been working on with uh, Kevin's GTO. Probably since the last time uh, you saw this bad boy, I don't know if she had the mirrors, door handles, door locks. We've also got all of the glass inside. Needs to be adjusted. Got a couple more pieces of trim and weather stripping to put on before we can do the final adjustments for that. But it is all in there and that's a pain in itself. So <laughs> glad to have that done. Uh, deck lid, got that adjusted. Just waiting for the spoiler. Got the seal and everything wrapped up. Uh, pretty soon we'll be moving to put the front fenders on and finish wiring everything, but we want to focus on getting the interior ready to go to the actual interior shop. All right, so I know you've got a lot of the electronics and stuff up in here. We had some uh, comments on social media about weather and whether that would get rained on or not. Yeah, this actually has a cover that will seal everything and it'll be watertight, so you don't have to worry about any Anything getting in there, the customer opted to not do wipers because a lot of these cars aren't taking out in the rain. And yeah, This is a cool place to mount this, nice and hidden. Yeah, keeps it out of the way and keeps the engine bay clean and... Yeah, everything so, uh, everything minimized yep. under the bay, yeah. All right, so here's one we haven't really talked about in a vlog in a while, and that's Simon's 1970 Chevelle. So Zach has been over here spending every hour of every waking day blocking this thing and getting it prepped for paint. So uh, kind of talk about the process a little bit, Zach. Like, what have you actually been having to do to get this ready? Well, uh, I don't think this thing has been featured in quite a long time, but since then we've done all the mud work on the car. It gets skim coated from tip to tail, right? So it makes sure everything flows, um, everything is nice and smooth, all the dents are taken care of, any little ripples in the bodywork. From there, it gets to this point where we have a coat of high build polyester on it. Um, right now, I'm going through, I'm block sanding it with 150 grit, fixing any bodywork touch ups, sharpening up any body lines, stuff like that. Um, and then after I'm done with that, it'll get sanded with 220 and we'll be ready for another fresh coat of primer. So, how long do you think it'll be before we actually put paint on this car? Um, t timelines always change, right? So, you know, we got a lot going on in the shop, but I would say within the next month or two, we should start seeing some color going on the car. And have we made a decision or has uh, Simon made a decision on stripe color yet? Or are we still? Actually we have. So I actually, I have a sample of paint color. Uh, it's a little dusty, so you have to, you have to excuse me. So it's, it's actually Audi Azores green. I think I'm saying that right. I don't know. It's in a fancy Audi color, right? <laughs> um, and he's going with black SS stripes. Because okay, this cool. is a true SS car so we've decided to put the stripes back on it yeah and for those of you who don't know simon is keeping this car with with a big block in it he's not doing an ls like a lot of people do with these classic cars so that's actually pretty cool it's not very often that we get to see a car that doesn't get an ls or a coyote or you know a modern powertrain put in it so so that that's really cool right yeah it's not that we don't love a good ls swap but it is a little refreshing to see just you know efi on a big block and high horsepower and it should be a good time yeah nice and then i saw that we have the bumper over here yeah so we got the bumpers back from advanced plating 
Um, these are currently in copper and the whole purpose of sending these back in copper is to make sure that everything is final fit and that way if we have to make any changes to the fitment at all with the bumpers front or rear we try to tuck them in and get like a pretty tight tolerance as far as gaps go and if we have any issues now is the time to fix it so you don't want to send them out have them completely chromed and then find out uh oh you know we don't have enough clearance or, or what have you so they send them back in copper plating we refit them to the car, confirm everything is good, and then they'll get shipped back to advanced plating and, and they'll be all finished up. There is one more thing that we try to make sure we do when we do the body work on all these cars, and that is uh, something that's overlooked uh, at a lot of shops, and that's to keep all of our rubber gaskets and seals in place. Uh, all of our trunks, our doors, all the rubber bumpers are in the hood. Um, you even have the little bumpers here up top on the deck lid. Um, we put all that stuff in place, that way when the car is body worked and all blocked together, everything lines up the same, you know, every time through paint. So, right, so that way it's not going to change once we get out. Exactly. Yeah. If you don't put all the rubber bumpers and, and all the seals and stuff in it, uh, a lot of people find they'll do all the body work nice and flush, and then when it's all painted and wet sanded and pretty, the panels don't line up properly. So it's an extra step that we take um, to make sure that everything stays in alignment and so everything's all nice and kosher. So. Nice. Very cool. Yeah. All right, that's it for this episode. If you want to see more updates from the project shop, you can visit us at DetroitSpeed.com slash projects, or I'll also post a link down in the description below. Don't forget to like and follow Detroit Speed on social media. We'll see you next time. Okay.